from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, January the 2nd, 2019. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu returned to Israel today after a five-day historic visit to Brazil, where he met with a number of world leaders and officials, including with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The two addressed the press before meeting on a number of issues, where Pompeo reassured that the U.S. decision to withdraw from Syria does not affect the U.S.'s commitment to the Jewish state. The decision the president made on Syria in no way uh, changes anything that uh, this administration is working on alongside Israel. The counter ISIS campaign continues, our efforts to counter Iranian aggression continue, and our commitment to Middle East stability and the uh, protection of Israel continues in the same way it did before that decision was made. Netanyahu also met together with Pompeo with the president of Honduras, Juan Orlando Hernandez, to discuss Honduras's possible move of its embassy to Jerusalem. The meetings in Brasilia were on the sidelines of the inauguration of Brazil's new president, Jair Bolsonaro, who also discussed the moving of Brazil's embassy to Jerusalem, telling Netanyahu it was a matter of when, not if. Well, after saying just over a year ago that it would leave UNESCO over its anti-Israel bias, Israel officially left the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization yesterday. Israel's ambassador to the UN, Danny Danone, told the Times of Israel earlier on Monday that UNESCO is a body that continually rewrites history, including by erasing the Jewish connection to Jerusalem. Danon said Israel was consistently singled out by the body, which he says is manipulated by Israel's enemies. Danon said, we are not going to be a member of an organization that deliberately acts against us. Israel joined UNESCO in September of 1949. The United States had also announced last year that they would withdraw from UNESCO over Israel's unfair treatment, and that also reportedly became official yesterday. Both Israel and the U.S. will reportedly remain observer states at the organization. And some surprising political news in Israel. Leader of the opposition party Tsipi Livni is out. The head of the Labor Party, Avi Gabai, who had a partnership with Livni and her Hatnu'a party, announced last night that he was dissolving that partnership. Gabai said this on live television without any notice to Livni beforehand, who was sitting right there at the time of the announcement. Livni today told Army Radio that Gabai had tried to humiliate her, calling the move petty and ugly. Meanwhile, Gabai has tapped former Labor Party leader Shelly Yachimovich as the new leader of the opposition. And it was announced today that American-born journalist Carolyn Glick of the Jerusalem Post will be joining the new right-wing party in Israel called Hayamin HaChadash, the New Right, which is led by Israeli Education Minister Naftali Bennett and Justice Minister Ayelet Shaked. For the first time in over six weeks, a rocket was launched at Israel from Gaza this past Friday night. It landed in an open area and no damage or injury was caused. In response, the IDF sent an attack helicopter targeting a Hamas military post in southern Gaza. Today, a Palestinian man threw a pipe bomb at Israeli soldiers in the West Bank. No troops were injured and a search was on for the terrorist who fled the scene. A court in the Palestinian Authority sentenced a Palestinian-American man to life in prison for trying to sell property in East Jerusalem to Jews. 53-year-old Issam Akel was sentenced on Monday in Ramallah for, quote, attempting to sever parts of Palestinian land and annex it to a foreign state, unquote. He can reportedly appeal the decision. If you recall, back in November, U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman had called for Akel's release, saying that his incarceration violated American values. German Jewish writer Edgar Hilsenrath has died. Hilsenrath, who survived the Holocaust, wrote about the atrocities in such award-winning novels as The Nazi and the Barber and Night. He died on December the 30th in Germany after battling pneumonia. He was 92. 
And French resistance hero Georges Longuet has died. He is credited with saving the lives of hundreds of Jewish children during the Holocaust, smuggling them across the border with Switzerland. He was a cousin of fellow resistance fighter and renowned mime Marcel Marceau. France's Holocaust Memorial Foundation called Longuet an exceptional man. He died Friday in Paris at the age of 108. The Pittsburgh Steelers donated $70,000 to help the Jewish community and the families directly affected by the deadly shooting last year at the city's Tree of Life synagogue. The team's Stronger Than Hate campaign was launched right after the tragedy and inspired support from all over the world. And just before their home game this past Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals, the team's president, Art Rooney II, presented a check to the Jewish Federation of Greater Pittsburgh's Fund for Victims of Terror. The Federation said the funds would help with medical bills and psychological services and counseling for victims and first responders, as well as for added security. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, January the 2nd at 7 o'clock. Former chair of the Conference of Presidents, Robert Sugarman, looks at the two-state solution from Limud, New York, 2018. At 8 o'clock now, outgoing opposition leader Tsipi Livni's remarks last year from the Israel Policy Forum. Then at 9, Mark Golub sits down with Benjamin Anthony and Brigadier General in Reserve Amir Avivi, who present their new state solution. At 10, authors Joshua Hankin and Anouk Markovitz speak with New York Jewish Week book critic Sandy Browarski at Congregation Rodef Shalom in New York City. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, it's Thinking Out Loud with Micah Halpern. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, January the 2nd, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader.